photodetectors are in general used to convert light in electrical signals um, um, for plenty of applications. Um, one of those are um, optical communications, uh, others are spectroscopy. Um, traditionally, photodetectors are made out of uh, semiconductors, for example, silicon, um, gallium arsenide, the typical materials. Now, when we started our photodetector work uh, about in 2008, and what attracted us about graphene was uh, that uh, the graphene does not have a band gap. So, um, uh, so actually, the picture here on the left shows you, uh, uh, on the right shows you a, <coughs> a typical photodetector made of a um, semiconductor like silicon, for example. And you can have optical transitions in the visible or in the near infrared, but it, uh, because of the band gap of this material, you don't have transitions uh, in the far infrared or in the mid infrared regime. Uh, uh, graphene is actually the band structure shown on the left. Uh, on the other hand, shows transitions in the terahertz, the mid infrared, the near infrared visible up to the ultraviolet regime. So it would be an extremely broad band device that can cover all optical wavelengths without having to use different materials. Now, the simplest device that we used in the beginning is actually shown here. Uh, it's just a standard graphene transistor, thin film transistor, where we have a graphene sheet uh, that we put on some substrate that we can also use as a gate electrode. And we do put um, drain and source electrodes to both sides. And now if we shine this light onto this device, uh, we saw that there are different mechanisms uh, that contribute to the photocurrent. Now, the, the first one and the most obvious and easiest uh, uh, mechanism is that uh, you, you generate a photocurrent at interface between one of those electrodes and the graphene sheet. Um, and the reason for this actually for, the, for this process is that you uh, that you have some some built-in field at this interface because of different uh, charging of those two materials here, and uh, this built-in field uh, uh, separates the the, the um, photo-generated carriers just by the uh, electric field that's built in there. Now this is actually the, 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 you know, the way most photodetectors work. Uh, what's special about the graphene is that there are also other, uh, other mechanisms can contribute a lot. Now one is the photo, uh, uh, photothermoelectric effect, also called Seebeck effect, where you can have an interface between graphene and some other material. And we shine, you shine your light actually at this interface. And what you see then is that you heat uh, your graphene sheet and the, and the metal uh, differently. So you get some temperature uh, gradient there. And uh, as the SEPI coefficients of these two materials are different, uh, also the temperature gradient is symmetric, the current flow in both directions is symmetric and you generate net photocurrent. So in fact it turns out that the second mechanism, the photothermoelectric effect, is usually stronger than the, 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 the standard uh, photoelectric effect in these materials. A third effect can be observed <clears throat> if we uh, suspend the graphene sheet in air, so, so thermally uh, isolated from an environment, for example, and we shine the light not at the interface, but if we shine it right in the middle of this sheet. Uh, and what we see then is that we heat up uh, the graphene sheet, um, um, so we get an elevated temperature there, and, uh, and because of this heating, the, the sheet uh, changes its, its resistance. Uh, and you can now uh, sense this resistance uh, just by, by applying a small voltage between these two leads and measuring the current flow. Now people typically use not single layer graphene for this kind of detectors uh, because single layer graphene uh, has a metallic behavior, uh, has a very weak uh, dependence of the resistance on temperature. So people typically use a bilayer graphene where they apply electric field that can uh, generate a small gap of, of tens of milliV only. But this is actually sufficient to get this, uh, a strong temperature dependence of the resistance and this actually allows you uh, to, to detect photons with, with such kind of devices. Uh, a force method is actually shown here. So uh, um, it's actually a quite a different uh, geometry. You, you do not apply the, 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 the voltage there between drain and source, but you apply it between the, the drain gate um, and, uh, and the gate electrode itself, right? So you, you couple your radiation, for example, with an optical antenna to those electrodes. And what it does, it actually uh, generates a standing plasma wave in the graphene sheet, and because of different matching at the, at the two contacts here, you genera generate a net DC voltage, and you can again measure this DC voltage, and it would give you um, uh, an idea about the, the light intensity. Now, the fifth method is actually shown here. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a kind of hybrid photodetector, where you have a, a standard graphene photodetector, graphene sheet, and on top of the graphene sheet, you put some molecules, nanowires, whatever you want. Uh, the idea of this device is actually that you absorb the light, for example, in graphene or in those quantum dots, and you transfer energy 
you transfer one type of carrier into the dots, and the other type of carrier remains in the graphene. And um, for example, if the holes transferred into the quantum dots, the, uh, the electrons actually in graphene, they keep oscillating until eventually they recombine. So it gives you a very strong photoconductive gain. It's actually a, a very uh, sensitive kind of photodetector. Now the drawback of all those mechanisms of this device in general is that if you shine light in a uh, normal incidence, that most, most of the light would be transmitted uh, through your device you will, uh, because the graphene sheet, because the graphene sheet is extremely thin. Uh, so people started, including us, started to look at different um, kind of geometries to enhance the interaction between light and graphene. And one of those mechanisms actually shown here, so the light in this case actually is not propagating uh, in perpendicular to the, to the graphene sheet, but it's propagating in parallel. So you can make the interaction lengths between graphene and light much longer. In fact, you need something like 20 to 30 micrometers in a typical waveguide to absorb 100% of the light. So you can in, uh, increase the absorption of light and increase the responsivity of your photodetector devices. And the second method that people have been looking into is actually to put graphene into some kind of cavity. So this could be um, a, a, a black mirror cavity. Uh, some people were looking into photonic crystal cavities. Uh, in, in any case, the, actual, the incoming light is actually trapped in this cavity. It travels forth and back with, between the two end mirrors. And that way, you can also uh, increase the interaction of light with graphene. Those kind of uh, graphene-based photodetectors. Uh, uh, there, there, are, there are several advantages that this uh, kind of devices offers. There are also some challenges that have to be solved. Now, one of the advantages that it offers is that it is very broadband, as I mentioned at the beginning. It can absorb, actually, all those devices work in any frequency range, from the terahertz to the ultraviolet. Um, Another advantage uh, that uh, graphene offers is that it's extremely fast. So we, so we did um, electrical measurements, ultra-fast measurements of these kind of devices, and what we found is that up to 40 gigahertz, 60 gigahertz, we still have a flat response. In fact, the, the photo response is so fast that we cannot measure it electrically. We did some uh, all optical measurements where we could go up to 260 gigahertz, uh, which is extremely broad bandwidth. Uh. For, for the challenges, um, 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 the challenge still is to extract sufficient carriers out of graphene. Uh, uh, the number actually that describes how sensitive a photodetector is, is, is the photoresponsivity, which is uh, the photo current divided by the incident power. And this is typically, for this kind of device, even for this advanced kind of devices, about 10 times lower than in standard germanium or silicon photodetectors. So the, the remaining challenge will be to increase this uh, responsivity. I think it can be done. Uh, what we essentially have to do is uh, to, to, to increase the quality of the graphene sheet, to have higher mobilities, to, so, so that we can extract more carriers before they recombine. And that way we should come uh, to values close to what you can achieve with standard uh, photodetectors. Now, in terms of applications, where, where could graphene be used? Uh, now, one possible application is optical communications. Graphene is extremely fast photodetector, so this actually is actually certainly important for optical communications. Uh, it can be easily integrated with all kinds of, of um, photonic devices, including waveguides, uh, which is difficult to do, for example, with 3.5 semiconductors. And it's all, it also works uh, across all optical communication bands, so you don't need the specific detector designs for different communication bands. Uh, a second application that we imagine uh, could be um, um, detection at long wavelengths, especially in the terahertz regime, there you have not many materials that uh, work very well. Uh, also in the mid-infrared regimes, applications there would be um, spectroscopy in medicine um, uh, and, and similar applications.